Imagine surviving 100 days in a fantasy world, just for everything to be taken away from you. A boss is seeking revenge on me after I took down his brethren. Can I survive insane challenges, get unforetold armor, and defeat this boss? All while surviving these 100 days? Stay tuned to find out. What? Where am I? You're in my dimension. I rule here. You took down a few of my brothers, and I'm taking payback. Hey, those are mine! Not anymore. I'll be keeping these. They're my new... pets. They are not yours. You really thought you could hurt me? <laughs> I own this realm. You are merely here to witness your friend's demise. If this is a dream world, doesn't that mean I can control it too? Oh, you'll pay for that, mortal. I can do that again if you think about firing that bow again. I've had my fun. I'll see you on the other side, kid. I woke up from this really crazy dream and I didn't believe it. When I woke up from that dream, I didn't think it was reality until I walked outside and all of my dragons were gone. All of the friends that I had made on my previous 100 days had disappeared. They'd been taken from me. I was in such disbelief, I searched everywhere. All of the teleports, every dimension, everywhere I could think. At least I still have Perry, right? Yo, Perry, what happened here? Did this Roka guy actually take the dragons? Yeah, he did. I thought I was going to be next. That guy's really scary, man. I don't know if we'll ever see them again. Of course we will, Perry. I'll find them, I promise. You know who this guy is, right? He's the strongest Abyss Dimension monster. You're going to have to prepare a lot if you're going to face him. And Perry was absolutely right. I have so much to do before I can free my dragons. I figured if this guy was so scary, it was time to research the armor I could use against him. I'm currently only rocking Feather Eye armor, which only gives me the ability to double jump, walk on water and lava, and take reduced fall damage. But while doing this minor research, I realized that only 10% of you guys are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you wouldn't mind turning that big red button gray, I would much appreciate it. You'll be helping me achieve my dream of eventually becoming 10 times more powerful than the Super Bowl. Yeah, we could probably attack a country at this point. Any hoodle, back to the video. That won't be enough to take out the Roka. So instead I did a quick Google search and figured out that there is an armor set that combines every single upgraded netherite armor into one. However, this looks insanely difficult to craft as I need nether stars for every single piece. And I'm also going to have to get one ingot of every single armor set. As well as I wanted to get each set anyway, so I guess I can go on the journey of getting each set and some extra pieces. Hey, if you think you can get all that armor on your own, you're sadly mistaken. What do you mean alone? Who's supposed to help me? I suggest seeking help from the villagers. If anything, they'll get you the best in chance for your armor. I don't really have the best relationship with villagers. Why would they help me? You're desperate, aren't you? Harry's right once again, so I went ahead and flew off to the nearest village. I found a desert village and talked to one of the guards. Translation, they're gonna need a really nice place to stay. Which means I have my work cut out for me. Once I got home, I found a small location I could build a castle for the villagers. Doesn't have to be anything too crazy, just make it seem like they're not in a prison for once. And to do that, I'm gonna need to get a bunch of different materials. First, I headed to a birch forest and harvested the entire thing. After that, it was time for some spruce. You know I'm not gonna do an entire build without spruce, right? And I finished this trip off with getting some oak, just to balance out the gradient I'm about to use. Then I went out and grabbed cobblestone, not only because I needed the cobbled part, but also because I need stone and stone brick for this build. And I mean a lot of cobblestone. Lastly, I grabbed blackstone from the nether and started getting all of the detail stuff, like trapdoors, stairs, slabs, lanterns, all of that jazz. Hopefully this build satisfies these greedy villagers. And talking about those pesky villagers, I started a merch line. Yes, now you can have your very own welcome in merch, which includes two different sweatshirts, a shirt, a beanie, a blanket, which is pretty awesome, phone cases, and a mouse pad. All of this can be found either down below on my merch shelf or linked below in the description. Make sure to go get your stuff now because who knows how long this will last. I first started by stacking up a tower, and then I laid down a nice foundation for it, so it looked a little bit better than just a 3x3. Then I worked on the castle wall where I was going to have the gate. I needed to get a small understanding of where everything was going to go. Then I was able to craft up some vertical slabs with stone brick and make the entrance look a little bit better. And yes, I did just say vertical slabs. This must be a fantasy world still, because I can't believe this. Then I worked on the walking part of the castle wall, adding in more stairs and vertical slabs to make it look like it was, well, better than it was, because a lot of this was cobblestone still. 
Continuing the build, I went back to the tower and started working on a foundation for the upstairs part of the tower, or more or less a clock tower area that I'll never use, but make it look cool at least. And once that area was done, I grabbed blackstone and started working on the roof. I actually have really mixed feelings about the roof. It doesn't look great, but it also is a very interesting design compared to what I've done before. Maybe the villagers will appreciate it a little bit more than I have, since this whole area is for them. Once the tower was done, I moved my attention over to a storage room. Now, yes, this place is for villagers, but I'm going to make a separate area that I can store stuff because my storage system right now is pretty dog. And hopefully I'll dedicate at least one day to moving everything into this place. Once the quote unquote house or storage room was done, I worked on a tower for the side of it because we are still dealing with a castle here. It looks pretty okay. I don't know how I like this design of towers, but I mean, I needed a different one compared to the one I had just done. So this seemed like the better option. And I did the same design on an interior wall sealing off the castle so the villagers don't escape because they're still my prisoners. I don't care. They are going to be my prisoners. I can't help it. All right. I hate them. I'm sorry. And to finish off the building aspect of the castle, I added in a house at the top of a stair so I could add in even more villagers. Maybe even make a breeder up here. Hint, hint. I don't because they're my prisoners and I locked them up. Overall, for the time I put into this place and the materials that I was able to use, this thing turned out much better than I expected. I mean, we have a storage room, a really awesome tower, a few areas I can put some villagers, and an awesome aesthetic. Once this place was complete, it was time to go check on the villagers and see if they were ready for the move. Once I got there, there were already some villagers on the coast ready for me. I talked to Barrett and he said that these guys were ready for the move. And once all that was settled, it was time to start boating my villagers home. A day later, I arrived with the last one, and now it was time to get them all organized. I started by bringing in one villager at a time. The first guy gave me Unbreaking 3. Then after that, I moved in another one and another one, trying to get mending from either of them. Eventually, I did get mending from one of them, and later killed him on accident. Look, I had a lot of misclicks during this. I mean, a uh, oh, there's another one. Yeah, a lot, okay? Basically, all of these villagers hate my guts because I've clicked on them way too many times, and they probably should not have volunteered to come here, because this is... Uh, this is probably terrifying for them. And eventually, I was so sick and tired of them not giving me what I wanted. I had one mending guy and one unbreaking three guy, and for now, that's all I need. They just wouldn't take a job or do anything I wanted at all, basically. So I figured it wasn't worth it to continue wasting my time on them. Hey, Perry, can you tell me how strong this guy actually is? You know how you looked up that ultimate armor a little while ago? Yeah, you're definitely gonna need that. But that was like my hypothetical dream set. There's almost no way for me to get that in the next 100 days. Well, you just said it. It's your dream set. Where has this guy attacked you the most? If you're going to beat him at his own game, you're going to really need this set. All right. Well, if that's how I have to get the dragons back, then I'll do it. But this set is so expensive. Holy. And if I'm going to get those nether stars, I'm going to have to get some wither skulls. However, to gather these, instead of flying to a nether fortress and actually fighting wither skeletons, I decided to just fight the skulls that were floating around in this biome. And it turns out it worked because this guy gave me my first skull. Then I found another group of skulls and got my second wither skeleton skull. This process continued until I had four and I left the nether. Once I got back to base, I realized I could actually make witherite ingots. Which, yes, I do need those to make ultimate armor, but at the same time, I kind of need them to make the witherite set. And I realize I'm really stunting my progress towards the ultimate set by making an actual witherite set and a set for every other ingot. But I really kind of want it because I want to make a super cool armor room. So I'm going to go ahead and make a witherite set anyway. However, to do that, I'm going to need a lot more netherite. So I traveled to the nether and decided to fly around to find it instead of actually going mining for it. In my opinion, it's a lot more boring to mine for a netherite than it is to actually just go find it in here because of the amazing structures that are in this mod pack. First up, I found a Bastion where I was able to get two netherite ingots. And if you know Bastions, then you know netherite ingots are actually super rare, so I'm really glad I found this first. Next was a netherite castle where I was able to get two pieces of ancient debris. And another netherite castle. Then a piglin tower where I was able to get some extra netherite scraps. And let's be honest, this went on for a little while where I was able to go from netherite castle to Bastion to piglin tower to find the little shards of netherite that I needed. However, to find the real treasure, no, not pirate treasure, I'm not Blackbeard, I had to find the nether version of an end city. This thing is sweeter than a Hallmark Christmas movie. After days of strenuous hard work flying through the no, I'm just kidding, I went in a straight line the entire way. But I did end up at an end city. Or nether city? Nether end city? Never city. Nend. Nend city. There you go. The first chest had basically more netherite than I'd found the entire trip. 
and the second chest loot pool was bigger than my inheritance, giving me over 7 pieces of netherite. This place had more chests than I expected, and by the third one, I was already up to 14 pieces of netherite. And by the time I made it to the fourth chest, I realized it's very possible for me to make that armory room right away. However, 14 amazing chests is all I'm going to be getting, but I'm fine with that. I'm getting out of here now. I've been in the nether way too long, but honestly, it was totally worth it. Upon arriving home, I had to organize all of my stuff, but I realized I have 21 netherite ingots, 17 scrap, and 40 ancient debris. If you add that up, that's 35 pieces of netherite. I'm definitely going to be able to make a ton of sets with this. And by definitely, I mean right now. So I instantly made the witherite set. This was a worthwhile check mark in my to-do list. And since I have the largest bucket list known to man, I went ahead and made the goldarite armor as well. This one basically allows me free passage in the nether against piglins, but at this point, I'm not going to really be using it. So I went ahead and used all of the extra netherite that I had found across the previous 100 days and used that to upgrade it. Now I'm rocking with five of the eight sets that I need to complete an armory room. From there, I went ahead and made the ender eye armor, which is another set of armor that I'm going to be needing, but basically not using. Right now, I don't really care about enchants or what armor I'm putting this on because it's all just going to look really, really cool in an armory and I'm never going to wear it. Although I'm not going to lie, the enderman one actually looks quite cool. But that now makes six out of the eight armors I need. I only need spider eye armor and prismarite armor, which are two that I'm going to get next. However, I have a feeling that giant white puffer fish is going to make it a little bit difficult to get the prismarite armor. Okay, so you may be wondering why I'm sitting in a giant obsidian hole. Well, on my way to the Guardian Temple, I found a mega base, and I also forgot to hit record, so yeah, that's where I am. If you guys saw the previous 100 days, this is better than any treasure room I could have found. It has diamond blocks, gold blocks, emerald blocks, and a ton of diamond stuff in all of the chests. There are also secret chests and secret areas where I can find netherite stuff that I was able to loot before I even left this place. And let me just say, it was totally worth spending time here because this place always gives me the best of the best loot. But once I left, it was finally time to go to the actual guardian temple. Uh, what? Why is there another one? Looks like I'll be doubling my material count on this trip. But once I was done looting this place, it was finally time to head to the guardian temple. I was itching to get this armory done, and I was never going to get there if I didn't get this set of armor. Upon arrival, I mined as many scene lanterns as I could before the giant white pufferfish decided to give me mining fatigue. At that point, I only had 19 prismarine crystals, and I need 40 if I'm going to get a full set and 6 extra ingots. So I headed to an island, teleported back to my place, drank a bucket of milk, and went back for the rest of the crystals. By the time I had scored over 40 prismarine crystals, I was already inside the temple and scored myself an extra 8 gold blocks. Not that I really need it, but it's kind of fun defeating the temple. And by defeating it, I mean uh, I didn't kill anything and I stole from it. <laughs> it's villagers all over again. Once home, I organized all of the gear I had gotten from the two mega builds and crafted myself up the guardian version of the netherite, aka prismarite. This means I only have one last armor to craft, spiderite. Then I will successfully have every single armor that has a special ability. And to get spider eye, I flew out to find one of the spider dens that spawn above ground. Once I found one, there were actual spawners in here for cave spiders and regular spiders. And with looting three, it didn't take me long to get 40 plus spider eyes. Once I was done there, I flew home so I could craft my last set of armor. I have to say it was great finally sealing the deal and having every single type of armor. Although I do have that looming fact that now I need six of every single ingot and six nether stars to craft the ultimate set, but we'll deal with that next. So I headed up to the attic of the storage room in the castle and put down all of the armor stands I'm going to be needing. I filled in each and every one with all of the seven sets of armor that I have, including the one that I'm wearing by kind of scooching my way in with this armor stand, but now we have a completed room. Although there is still one set of armor we need to actually get and put on the wall. And that is the Ultimarite set. We have a special place reserved for that in the middle, but for now, this looks really cool. Since I just focused on all of the other armor in the game, it's time to focus on the one set that I really need. And to get this set, I'm going to be needing a ton of wither heads, and that's what I did for the next few days. I thought my best idea to get these wither skeleton skulls was going to be to kill all the skulls that float around in this particular dimension, but later realized that it would probably be better to find a nether fortress for this big of a project. See, I need 20 plus wither skeleton skulls for this entire thing to work. And if I'm going to get that, I can't be killing all these skulls. It's taking me way too long. So I headed to a very open nether fortress. Here, I was able to farm skulls like no tomorrow, getting literally one after another after another. Thankfully, this didn't take near as long as I thought, and the luck was on my side for this part. 
especially when I was able to find piglin areas that had two wither skeleton skulls each. And now that I have everything I need, it's time to head home. I started gearing up for the fight of my life. I'm going to be taking on five separate withers. I don't think I'll be fighting five at once, but I will take on a couple just to see how I handle myself. Once I was fully ready, I went to the end. This is where I would take my stand against the withers. I set up to fight two at once, as I figured that would be a very decent challenge for the start. I've never taken on a wither in this mod pack, because I know that in regular Minecraft they are super easy, even if they're out on the loose, but this one, they could be terrifying. Once I spawned them in, I hoped one of them would hurt the other, but that didn't seem to happen. Instead, I got bombarded by both of them at the same time, as well as enchanted endermen. I was not expecting the fight that I was in. I got calm and started fighting with my bow, because that's the only way I can really hit them right now. I slowly started beating down on their health more than I expected to, thankfully, but it was still pretty scary. They seemed to be getting beat down pretty hard, and were almost at that point where I could attack them with a sword. As soon as one got down low enough, I started attacking him with the sword first. I was hoping I could get one clear and then the other. Unfortunately, none of that was working, and I flew out so I could hit the other guy with my arrows. I would rather have both of them on the floor if I could. This fight lasted a lot longer than a regular wither and my gear was suffering. Although I killed the first one and it was only a 1v1 now. I had a feeling this guy was going to be easier so I bowed him down and then started killing him with my sword. The fight didn't last much longer but honestly the reason this was so tough was the enderman that kept attacking me. Thankfully I now have two out of the five nether stars that I need. Unfortunately, my fight's not over yet, but I decided to make it a little bit easier on myself and bedrock trap these withers. Withers after that were extremely easy, as expected since they literally can't move or leave this area. It was one after another after another, and we had every single one that I needed now. That means I am one step closer to the ultimate set of armor. But that's not enough. My dragons will not settle for enough, okay? I have to get them back, and the only way to do that is to finish this quest and get the rest of this armor. Unfortunately, I'm going to be needing a ton more netherite to complete this recipe. So I headed to the end and started healing my pickaxe because I'm going to be using this to mine for netherite. Now, this is one of the first times I'm going to be mining for it instead of going and looking. I figured my chances of mining are going to be a lot better instead of searching for another end city. I got really lucky then, and I don't think I can get that luck again. Once my pickaxe was fully healed, I grabbed another pickaxe, aka a vein mining pickaxe, that I was able to heal with diamonds and an anvil while in the nether. This was going to be my only hope for finding a ton of netherite. Once I changed dimensions, I started looking for a great place to mine, somewhere where I could wander for hours and hours, knowing that this was going to take forever. I settled on an area far from any lava pool so I wouldn't run into any danger. Then I started my mining process, strip mining of course. It wasn't long before I found my first vein of netherite. However, I was hoping for a lot more than one piece on this first go. The next vein was thankfully three pieces, which means we already had one single ingot. But I'm going to be needing like 30 single ingots, so this could take a while. I continued the mining process, getting netherite after netherite. I even ran into one of these little goblins and traded up for an extra bit. There was no way I was going to get this done anytime soon. I'll spare you the details, but once I got over 100 ancient debris, I was ready to get out of there. This was probably one of my biggest accomplishments ever in Minecraft. I have never mined this long getting this much ancient debris. And while exiting the nether and mining up, another goblin actually spawned on me. And I had a ton of ancient debris to throw his way. Now, I didn't do the math on how much I just got, but those extra little pieces are going to come in handy forever and ever. The more netherite I can get, the better. I mean, I'm not making a netherite beacon here, but the people who've done that, oh, I feel for you guys. This was a terrifyingly long process, but definitely worth it once I have this armor set in my hands. Returning home, I had over 53 pieces of netherite. That is the most I have ever seen in any of my worlds. That is literally an accomplishment and a half right there. But that's crazy that that's how much I'm going to be needing for this. Although, yet again, we are only one step closer. I still have to go back and gather all of the other materials I need to craft up each individual set of ingots. First up were phantoms, so I headed to the nearest blimp which has phantom spawners on it and started getting as much phantom membrane as I could. I needed 24 in total and that's how much I was able to gather before I left the end. Next, I was back in the lovely spider den that we all know and love, gathering even more spider eyes. Thankfully, this place isn't difficult and the only thing I really have to worry about is poison. Once I was done there, it was time for feathers, my last and final item. Anything that had wings was a target for my blade. I went around killing doves, seagulls, pretty much anything I could get my hands on because I need a ton of feathers. Thankfully, being in the plains biome, wicked things spawned everywhere and I was able to get a ton really quickly. Then I gathered all of my armor and books to make the perfect set of netherite. 
I wanted everything to be prop four unbreaking with mending. And now you may think I should have gotten feather falling on this stuff, but I truly don't need it since phantom gear makes it impossible for me to take fall damage. I did have to go quickly grab 20 levels in order to finish out the gear, but that didn't take too long because of this enderman farm. Once I was done with that, I crafted up six of every single ingot. And I have to say, having them all in my inventory looks super, super sick. I cannot wait to have all of this gear. And by couldn't wait, I mean I crafted all of the ingots right now. I have one for my sword, one for my bow, and one for each piece of armor. Time to go show Perry my new accomplishment. Yo, Perry, look what I got. Oh man, that's awesome. What's your plan for it? I have an ingot for every armor piece, my sword, and my bow. Um, don't you remember the last time you fired an arrow at this guy? It didn't go too well. Why don't you consider a crossbow instead? You know what? You're absolutely right, Perry. I don't even know what I was thinking. It's time to build a crossbow. I started by grabbing one that I already had with Unbreaking 3 and Piercing 4. Then I looked through all my books to see what else I had and if anything was useful for a crossbow. Heads up, it was not. And if I was going to get a crossbow up and running, I was going to need some levels from the end. Thankfully, it doesn't take too long because it is an Enderman farm, but I believe in this mod pack, they actually are a little bit slower than regular Minecraft. So, I mean, not too long for you guys is boom. And now I'm back in the base. Now here I crafted my first crossbow ever, by the way. I had to look up this recipe and enchanted it to see if I could get anything new. I was really hoping for quick charge. Instead, I got multi-shot and unbreaking, which wasn't exactly what I wanted. However, later I was able to combine some things and get the quick charge that I wanted, and now I have a really awesome crossbow. With that all said and done, it was finally time to upgrade my gear to the ultimate gear. I was so stoked for this moment, you have no idea. This is the coolest set I've ever seen in my life. Every single armor piece is another step in a great direction for this 200 days. Heck, upgrading the crossbow made it look so much cooler than it already was, and now I have full ultimate gear. I took off my current set and put on my ultimate set, and now I look amazing. I went up to my armory and put up my feather set, which is something I'm not going to be using anymore, as I now have the best set of armor in the game. Look at all of these armors, and then look at me. All of these are combined in one, and I'm wearing it. Okay, Perry, am I ready now? Yes, you are finally ready. Uh, Perry, where am I supposed to go? Oh, right. The abyss is hard to enter. Uh, go on. Right, goldfish brain. You need Lauren, a rare orb from a flower to enter. Good luck with that. Seriously, that's all I get? A rare flower orb? Huh? What? Goldfish brain. Right, got it. So I flew out to go find this mysterious Lauren flower. I have zero clue what this looks like, and I kind of don't want to look it up. I don't know exactly why I don't want to look it up, but the mysterious Perry over here decided not to give me a description, so I'm going to go break every single flower I see. And I'm not kidding. I, I did that. I flew around biome after biome, every flower that looked different, breaking it and seeing what it was. There was absolutely no way I was missing out on a full inventory of useless flowers. Eventually, I did find the correct flower. This awesomely cool blue glowing flower dropped a Lauren orb. And I have to say, I should have guessed it was this flower. I mean, it looks epic. Right, maybe that's a little bit of overstatement, but like this is like one of those, you know, like superhero ones. Like one of the guys goes to the nuclear power plant and he breaks this flower and dies, but he's not dead and he's got super, you know what? It's, it's like that. Anyway, I went ahead and collected a ton, a ton, a ton of Lauren. I have literally no idea what the purpose of this is and how much I'm going to be needing. Perry, again, was very, you know, light on the details, so I figured grabbing a crap ton, way more than I'm probably ever going to need, is good for me. Once I was done, I flew out all the flowers I didn't need, slept, and then headed home. It was a long few days, but it was worth it to grab all the lore I needed. Alright, now that we're home- It won't work. What won't work? You need to face one more boss before you can enter the abyss. It's a void worm. One more? I can do that. With this new mysterious worm target on my mind, I headed to the end to get the first part of my quest done. This one I did look up. Apparently there's a rare mob that's only found in the end that drops something I need to create this worm thing. And since I have no idea what I'm looking for, I kind of just flew around looking for anything. While flying around, I do have to say that the end looks really beautiful. I mean, come on, like the, all these dimensions are looking so much better than just regular Minecraft. Anyway, side project aside, I'm still looking for this thing and I have no idea where to look. I probably should have figured out where and what biome he's in, but um, you know what, that's besides the point. 
kind of fun just strolling around anyway, because I don't really have a huge... T I mean, uh, I kind of need my dragons back, actually, now that I think. I should have focused. I should have focused up. You know what? That's on me. That's on me. But I did eventually find the thing, so I mean, it's not too bad, right? It was in the one biome that doesn't look amazing and just resembles regular N, but once I did find it, I was able to kill him and instantly get the item I needed. I, I think it's his face. I, I think I just stole his face. I, I, I'm pretty sure I just decapitated this guy. But now that that's over, I can head home and get out of here, which is something I don't really want to do because my favorite video ever was the end only video and I really like it here, but eh, whatever, I'll, I'll leave. I'll, maybe I won't. I like it here. Nah, I'll leave. I'll leave. I'm going. I'm going. I, I promise I will get the dra Okay, you know what? I'm going. Now that the first part's done, I still have two other items I have to get. First off, I have to kill a Crimson Mosquito and get one of the rarer drops that he drops, and then I have to go find a fly and kill him and get the drop that he drops, combine them, and then put them in the decapitated head. It's a lot to take in, but basically I'm going to the nether. Once I was in here, I started looking for any biome that resembled a Crimson Forest. Now, this weird mosquito thing can spawn anywhere in the nether, but he normally, or what I'm suspecting, spawns in a Crimson area. Since his name is Crimson Mosquito, it's... it's put two and two together you know that's kind of where i was going with that once i arrived i started scouting the entire area for any mosquito like creatures i don't exactly know what i'm looking for as my research i did was a png object and it's it's not a great image so i have no idea what i'm looking for to be honest while wandering around the sword actually lit up a giant mosquito so i found the creature i killed two of them and didn't get the drop that i needed so i'd have to find more perfect Eventually, though, while wandering around and getting absolutely blood sucked by these things, one of them did drop what I needed and I was able to head out of the nether. Part two of three completed, I just have one more object to find and I'm good to go. Then I can fight a giant worm. Why are there so many random bugs I gotta fight? Alright, just one last bug before the worm. One last bug before the worm. I hate bugs, as you can tell. To find this fly, I started fl- well, I flew around. I actually have no idea where they're supposed to spawn, so I kind of just went to open areas to see if I could find one. And I did end up using the minimap because it does highlight names of things that have spawned, so like fly or, or lizard, maybe like a snake, something like that. It'll pop up on the minimap so I don't have to, well, look forever. Eventually, I did stumble upon the fly in the desert, which is probably the weirdest spot for a fly because I don't- do they survive out there? I- I know nothing about flies. And the first one I killed gave me the exact item I needed for this mysterious worm. So now all I have to do is go home, craft up this larva thing, put it inside of a decapitated end monster, and then throw it in the void. Yup, good process. Alright, so I just put these two things together, and then I put this inside of here, and- oh, oh, okay, well that's- alright, interesting. Well, now I have a very weird wiggly worm, and that's, um, alright. So once I got to the end, I had this wiggly worm in hand, and I tossed it down below into the deep, dark abyss. I have no idea what's about to spawn, but let's just wait. Oh, there, what the heck is that? Okay, I was not expecting this fight. There were literal portals everywhere, and I accidentally walked into one right off the bat and almost fell off the map. That's pretty cool. Then I started flying around and using my crossbow to kill him. Thankfully, with the crossbow, it actually made him almost immovable, and I could just shoot at him over and over again. Thank you, Witherite and Spiderite, which gives me poison and wither effect, or it gives this mob poison and wither. It also helps with me killing him a lot easier, but eventually he actually split into multiple void worms, which I wasn't expecting. I was teleporting everywhere, he was teleporting everywhere, and he or she, she, them, multiple. There were so many. Eventually, though, I was able to kill off each and every one of them slowly but surely, and while firing my last arrow, he kind of just died to poison, so I won. That was pretty epic, but I don't know what that accomplished, so I, I guess we'll head home and figure out how to get to the abyss now. The next step in the process is to craft a translation letter. This thing basically unlocks the abyss for me, and I needed to defeat the void worm to get this. I was also able to claim an abyss lighter, which will let me light unstable obsidian once I obtain it. So apparently my next goal is to get unstable obsidian. Ah, uh, you know how much I'm gonna love mining obsidian. Wake up, you fool. What's going on? You really thought you could get to me, huh? You thought I would give up? You do have tenacity, but that won't help you defeat me. You won't even get to me, much less get your precious dragons back. Face me now, then! You'll see how ready I am. Foolish child. I'm gonna kill him. Harry, I need to know how to get to him now. I don't think you should. I know they were your friends, but- They were our friends, Perry. I have to get them back. How do I get there? Obsidian, Crying Obsidian, and Lauren. Use that to craft the unstable obsidian you need. Thanks, Perry. 
With Perry's advice, I grabbed my old vein mining pickaxe and started heading to the nether. I knew there was a biome that was pretty much full of obby and I'd be able to get a ton there. Mining obsidian may not be my favorite pastime, but if it's needed, then I'll do it. However, I didn't really have any specifications about how much I need, so I kind of went a little overboard. I probably had enough way earlier than this, but I decided to stay in here a lot longer and get way, way more. Maybe I craft it wrong. Maybe I need like 16 per. I, I have no idea the recipe, so I may as well just get a lot. And after this, I'm still going to have to get crying obsidian, which piglins are probably not going to give very easily. I had hope for the kindness in the piglins' hearts, but I still grabbed five stacks of gold just in case. I headed to the nether and found one of the piglin outposts where there were tons of piglins to be found. I started slowly gathering them onto one hole, first off getting two and then leading them in individually until I had a ton trading for me. Then I just let them at it, honestly. I, I turned to Netflix at this point. If you guys haven't seen The Arrow, by the way, watch seasons one through five and tell me they're not legendary. Don't, don't watch six or seven. It's, it's not worth your time. But since I'm on my 23rd time watching the entire series, I think I might be a little biased. Anyway, slowly but surely, these guys were giving me the crying obsidian that I needed, but since I still have no idea crafting recipe, I really should have looked this up, I stayed in here for a long time trying to get some. Or, well, more than some, like a lot. And at one point, I even had to go home and get more gold because I wasn't sure this crying obsidian was going to be enough. But the gold diggers that go oink finally gave me what I needed. And I was back out of the nether for now. Pause. If you're wondering how I got to this point, let's just say that handy dandy record button that I use as a YouTuber, I forgot to press it. Halfway through making this portal, I realized my mistake and now we have a fully functioning abyss portal. But before I go into that menacing looking portal, I'm going to go to sleep and then worry about gearing up for the days ahead. All right, see you, Perry. Wait. What, Perry? I have an idea to make it easier for you and harder on him. Outsmarting him for once. I'm listening. Iron golems, use them as a way to distract them. That way, it'll make it so much easier on you. I could use a bit of easy against this guy. All right, I'll do it. It honestly astounds me the amount of times this blue beetle is correct, but somehow he's pulled off this one too. So I headed inside and prepared an axe. I put efficiency four on it and then headed to the end so that I could get it fully healed up. Again, the amount of iron golems I'm going to be needing to use on this guy is unknown to me, so I figured I'd get a ton of pumpkins. Once I swatted enough skinwalkers, I went home and upgraded this axe to netherite. I figured it was time I do something special for the axe, as everything else was netherite and this was not. Then I headed out to find this random pumpkin biome that I know exists in this mod pack. Once I was there, I saw giant pumpkins far and wide and just decided to hack at them. Again, the question of how much I'm going to be needing is unknown to me, so I went through and basically decimated the land. However, once I had enough pumpkins to put any farmer to shame, I headed home. Then I realized that they actually have to be jack-o'-lanterns, or, or the shredded pump- I don't know, carved pumpkin? Is that it? Are they different? Is a pumpkin different than a carved pumpkin different than a jack-o'-lantern now? I, I don't know. Anyway, I carved as many as I could stand, okay? It's not Halloween, and I don't want to sit here forever, so I just got them all done. This is going to be enough, right? Right? With 2012 Halloween out of the way, I decided to start filling up my backpack with all of the necessary material. I went ahead and made a configuration of the iron golems I'm going to be using, as well as I did my best to craft a ton of colorful fireworks that are going to make you remember Spider-Man wanting to put dirt in your eye. I also grabbed out a ton of totems not knowing what I was going to get into, as well as equipped all of the god apples I got in my previous 100 days. Lastly, I started rationalizing grabbing stupid things like blocks, cobwebs, and potions that I'm definitely going to forget about. But at this point, the Roka is a complete and utter mystery to me, so I'm not sure what's going to hurt him or if I can even damage this guy. I might just be an ant to his Kratos. Who knows what's about to happen right now? No more stalling. It was time to go. I said bye to all my possessions and entered the scariest dimension ever. Once I was in, I started my search. I don't know where or what's going to be in this dimension. And my only hope of finding these dragons is flying around until I know what's what. After experiencing a little bit in this dimension, I don't want to be here long. There's constant thunder, everything technically lights me on fire, and all of the mobs are extremely scary. I ended up at a pillager fort, not exactly what I was expecting. If these guys have to be first, they have to be first. I've escaped a place similar to this on day one in the previous video, so this thing isn't going to be tough. I started by instantly amassing myself against every single mob in here. I have way too much confidence in myself, but you know what? At this point, it's kind of warranted. I'm about to face a boss that's been controlling my dreams for over 100 days. No way am I letting Grace Squidwards take me down. I slowly started fights with everything in this area. Wolves, pillagers, pillagers with bows, pillagers without bows. Some of them had like drums, I don't know. 
First things I looted were the areas with totems. Having extra ones of these, I guess, is gonna help me in here. Especially if I run into too much danger with overconfidence. Then I wanted to spoil myself with more god apples, so I started breaking barrel after barrel. In time, I was getting attacked, but that's fine because I was able to take them out and then resume my looting. I didn't think it would be smart of me to loot the entire place, especially since I'm not taking everything that's here. And I'm sure along the way, I will find a ton of useful loot here, so I'll come back later. Instead, I just wanted to fight everybody and loot a little bit of the area. It took a while with all the effects that some of these guys were giving me, with the amount of mobs I had to take on, and for the fact that in the abyss, more mobs kept spawning. God apples are basically the currency to my life, so getting more of these was totally worth. However, now that the general's been killed and everywhere that I've wanted to loot has been looted, it's time that I finally find the boss. I have to find him. With this guy haunting my thoughts even here, I started flying out to find him. I knew it would take a while and I had no idea where he was, but the travel was worth it. Everything I'd done up until this point were for the dragons and I wasn't going to stop now. Alright, this thunder's really starting to creep me out. Finally, while venturing out, I found him. His name popped up at the top of my screen and it looks like I found his base of operations. You really think this will go your way? For them, I'll die trying. You have heart, but not for long. What? What is this? Get off of me! You thought that would kill me? I hoped it wouldn't. You're mine. With the help of those iron golems, his health was low, but not low enough. The fight began, and let's just say he put up a good one. I never realized how tough a boss could be until this one. Thankfully, the god apples and potions I had were able to give me a lead. With the last hit, I had killed him. I defeated the beast of my nightmares, and I won. The dragons are finally mine again, and I can go home. With that said, all I can think about is getting these dragons home. I put down one of my waystones, started grabbing dragon by dragon. It was such a relief returning each and every one of them home. I'm gonna be honest, these guys were a sight for sore eyes. And now being able to look over and seeing my dragons again, it's such, it's such a relief, guys. And there's one more special thing I have to do. My ghost dragon Morgan may have died at the very beginning of this. I never thought I'd lose another dragon after spicy version 1. But if it's happened before, it can happen again, and that's why I have another ghost dragon egg. So I placed down Morgan too, and now we just have to wait for her to hatch. However, night's falling, and I think that's gonna have to happen on 300 days. The development of this world has been absolutely crazy. I've been able to defeat one of the strongest bosses ever known, free my dragons from his grasp, and I've taken on a few minor things in these 100 days. Let's just not mention the five withers. And now that we are waking up on day 200, I just want to thank you for making it this far. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe to the channel. With your guys' love and support, 300 days can't be that far behind. So if you want to see my lovely dragons and I back in action, let's hit that like goal. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.